Today on Pro's Parkcast, we're gonna be doing the top 10 plaques of Disneyland. Now you probably can guess what number one and number two is, but number six, you probably never even looked at it and there's a hidden Mickey on it. What is a plaque? Well, a plaque is a plate, you, it's like a, I don't even know how to describe a plaque. A plaque is what you put down to commemorate uh, something like a, an important moment, uh, an anniversary, or to also identify a, like an important spot. It's really cool. Disneyland has a bunch of these plaques sprinkled throughout Disneyland. So I'm gonna show you the top 10 plaques here. And if I don't include one that you like down below, put it down in the comments down below, which plaques I miss for you. We're not talking about plaque on teeth, we're talking about memorial plaques. The number 10 plaque in all of Disneyland is located right here in Frontierland. It's probably something you walk by all the time and never even noticed there's a plaque right here at the entrance of Frontierland. Right as you walk into Frontierland, the first thing you see is this flag pole, a flag and a flag pole. And at the base of this flag pole, what do you see is a plaque that was bestowed to Walt Disney. To Walt Disney in recognition of outstanding assistance and cooperation in extending humane ideals to peoples throughout the world from the American Humane Association in July of 1955. This was given him for all the amazing humane work that he's done. It's just an honor to have him here, right at the base of the flagpole in Frontierland. That was something that Walt Disney really believed in was uh, humanitarian work. He wanted Disney to give back to the community, and they did. There's a plaque right here in front of It's a Small World, and this was put here for the 25th anniversary of the ride. It's a small world, first voyage, April 22nd, 1964. New York World's Fair. For 25 years, the happiest cruise that ever sailed has shown millions a world of peace, understanding, and friendship. We rededicate this small world, the ideals of UNICEF, and reaffirm the commitment of the Walt Disney Company to all the world's children. August 8th, 1989, Roy E. Disney is the one that did that. It's such a fun ride, it's a small world. We have a whole video about that secrets revealed over here that you learn all about this. I mean, it's a classic and it's something I never get tired of. The number eight best plaque in all of Disneyland is located on Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Right outside the ride, you see Mr. Toad's Wild Ride and there's like a plaque there. Right there, I love this. And it says, it's in Latin, it says Toadai Acceleradio Semper Absurdia. And what that means is toad speeding is forever absurd. You got a speeding toad, that's utterly crazy. I think that's amazing. Did you guys know that Amanda and I do an extra video every Sunday night for our Patreon members? And we're our patrons, they can ask us any questions they want and we will go ahead and answer them because it kind of gets kind of crazy in the live streams and so much going on, we can't really follow, I can't focus on that. So Sunday night, we answer all of our Patreon questions. If you want to be a Patreon and be part of that amazing community, there's a link down below and also at the end of the video, a little circle comes up saying Patreon. You click on that and for as little as $3 a month, you can become a Patreon member and get an extra video every Sunday night. It's fun. For the seventh best plaque in all of Disneyland, you gotta come back into Frontierland and you see a giant petrified tree. In front of that tree is a plaque. This was an anniversary gift given by Mrs. Disney to Walt Disney. And as you can see, it's huge. Couldn't fit on the fireplace mantle, obviously. So she actually bequested it to Disneyland. This is a petrified tree. Now a petrified tree means that it's a tree that has turned into stone. It was wood, but through time and compression it is now turned into stone. Something unique about this plaque is that it's at the front and the back of the tree, so you can read it on both sides. Petrified tree from the Pike Petrified Forest of Colorado. This section weighs five tons. Now a ton is 2,000 pounds. So this tree weighs 10,000 pounds and measures 700 feet in diameter. The original tree estimated to have been at least 200 feet tall. It was part of a subtropical forest 55 to 70 million years ago in what is now Colorado. Scientists believe it to be of the redwood of sequoia species. During some prehistoric era, a catalytic upheaval caused silicon-laden water to overspread the living forest. Wood cells were changed during the course of time to sandstone. Opals were formed within the tree trunk itself. It was presented to Disneyland by Mrs. Walt Disney on September of 1957. I've been told that this is the oldest thing in all of Disneyland. It's over like 70 million years. And petrified tree, something that's very rare and is cool to see. Given by Mrs. Disney to Disneyland herself. The number six plaque in all of Disneyland is located on Pirates of the Caribbean. You've probably seen it. 
Did you just walk right by it? Let me show it to you. When you come through the line of Pirates Caribbean, you're going to see this plaque right here. This plaque is something I just walk, usually walk right on by and don't even really pay much attention. It's a plaque slash fountain. This plaque was put here on the 30th anniversary of the ride. When it had been at exactly the 30th birthday or anniversary of Pirates Caribbean, they put this plaque here to commemorate that. This is what the plaque says. 30th anniversary, Disneyland's Pirates of the Caribbean. Then in quotations, the original from 1967 to 1997. Honoring Walt Disney's Buccaneer crew, ex Antonio, Buddy Baker, Roger Brody, Gregory Bruns, Harriet Burns, Colin Campbell, Claude Coates, Alice Davis, Mark Davis, Don Eldrin, Bill Justice, Bill Martin, Mathel Rogers, Herbert Raymond, Lee Toombs. Then right at the bottom, what does it say in like cursive? Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. Dedicated March 7th, 1997, New Orleans Square, Disneyland. The 30th anniversary of Pirates Caribbean plaque right outside the ride. And you have to look at the detail on this. I mean, look at that. You got the pirate at the very top, right? That's reminiscent of the pirate. We have the first one that you go down, that hill you go down. He's got the eye patch, the hat on. He's like, the vast. It's too late to alter your course now. And then you got the mermaids right there. If you've noticed the mermaids, they have like keys on their belts. There's like a little key on their belt, unlocking treasure. This is such a cool plaque that most people just walk right on by. You look at the very, very top, and what do you see? It's a treasure chest, guys. A treasure chest, oops, right there at the very, very top. Opening up, because Pirates Caribbean is a treasure! But if you guys want to see something really cool on this particular plaque, there's a hidden Mickey. You ready? Right there in the center of the screen, you see that? The, the bubbles form a little hidden Mickey, guys, right there. Way to go, Dizzy, you thought of everything. And if you also notice at the bottom, what is this? This is at the bottom of an anchor. Right down there, you got part of the anchor there and then part of the anchor right over there as well. The bottom of the plaque is an anchor. This plaque is just amazing. And we just walk right on by it and never even really take, take even a look at it. The 30th anniversary plaque of Disneyland. This is the sixth best plaque in all of Disneyland. Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate life for me. Go! Oh, yeah. Yo ho, yo ho. Pirates alive for me. All right, this time, just Snow White. <laughs> yo ho, yo ho. <laughs> Nicely done. Well, wow. Everybody, one last time. Here we go. Yo ho, yo ho. Pirates alive for me. The number five plaque is found right here in front of Sleeping Beauty's Castle. The plaque is right here in the ground, and you can see it says. Placed beneath this marker on July 17th, 1995, the Disneyland 40th Anniversary Time Castle. The Time Castle, which is short like for like Time Capsule, contains Disneyland memories, messages, and milestones, lies beneath this spot. The Disneyland Time Capsule is dedicated to the children of the first century who may unlock its contents on the 80th anniversary of Disneyland, July 17th, 2035. So on 2035, they are going to pull up this plaque for the 80th anniversary of Disneyland. A lot of times people walk right over this and don't realize that buried beneath this is a whole bunch of treasure troves of Disney memorabilia. And you can see the bricks around it. The number five plaque, right there underfoot. The number four plaque in all of Disneyland is located right here. It's the Partner Statues plaque. Right below the statue is a plaque, right here. I love this, here it is. Partners, I think most of all, what I wanted Disneyland to be is a happy place where parents and children can have fun together. Walt Disney, that is the most Disney-esque thing I've ever heard in my life. Thank you, Walt. I think you'd be proud. The number three plaque in all of Disneyland is located in New Orleans Square, and it's right behind me at this anchor. Right here, you see this anchor. It's got some barnacles on it, and you're like, what is the, the part of the anchor is kind of poking out of this flower bed? But below the anchor is a plaque. And if you read this plaque, it says, and I'm not sure, I always pronounce this, pronounce this name, Lafitte's Anchor, said to be from a pirate ship commanded by Jean Lafitte in the Battle of New Orleans, January 8th, 1815. It is also said that Lafitte privateering ships left a wake of blood from the mainland to Barataria Bay, Barataria Bay, but don't believe everything you read. And you look at a bunch of barnacles around there on that particular plaque. 
we ride Pirates Caribbean and you're about ready to get off the ride, you're coming back on, you see a little sign there, it says Lafitte's Landing. So that ties that to this particular anchor, Pirate Sea. Pirates. Pirate? There's a pirate. I'm not exactly sure, but that is a very cool plaque and anchor. The first time I actually saw this anchor was on the news. It was a news anchor. It seems like it's a perfect time to tell this joke. Actually, it's not a joke, it's a true story. Do you know how to tell the difference between a boy ant and a girl ant? If you take them and throw them on the water, the girl ant will sink, but the male ant is buoyant. Okay, so the number two plaque in all of Disneyland is right here in the entrance of Disneyland. Now, you can see the same plaque on the right or left-hand side. So which one do you want to go? Let's see, we'll go to the right. So let's go to the right and check it out. This is the number two plaque in all of Disneyland. And every single time I come to Disneyland, I read it. And I feel like it's literally as I go underneath this little tunnel that I am walking into a world of magic, fantasy, fun, amazingness. There it is. Here you leave today and enter the world of yesterday, tomorrow, and fantasy. And it's true, you do. Let's do a few honorable mentions before we get to number one. In New Orleans Square, you can see this Drinky Fountain. If you saw our Drinky Fountain video, there's this plaque right here. Now, I didn't really, I didn't know if I should include this on the list because there's no words on it, no inscriptions, but we do know this. It came from New Orleans Square and it's estimated to be between 120 and 150 years old. <sighs> How cool is that? If you're lucky enough to get a long line outside Mr. Toad's, you're gonna, as you walk through the garden, you can see all these plaques of the characters. Angus McBadger, officer, sage advice of so often scorn. You got Mr. Moley, Mr. Mole, a loyal and sympathetic friend. My favorite, J. Thaddeus Toad Esquire, master of Toad Hall and curable adventurer. And lastly, you have Mr. Rat, tries to cure Toad's mortomania. All right, so this next honorable mention I can't show you, but the reason I'm gonna tell you about it is I'm pretty sure they're gonna bring it back. I mean, I'm hoping they do. Did you know that on opening day, everybody knows that Walt did his little dedication speech, but did you know that each land has also their own dedication speech? And Tomorrowland was the only land that put their dedication speech out on a plaque on display. Now, when they removed the French fry rocks, they got rid of that dedication speech, but they're bringing us right back here. You can see there's a little mural. They're gonna redo the whole entrance to Tomorrowland. I'm thinking that they will bring back the Tomorrowland plaque. Honorable mention. Here's another honorable mention, which I know I'm not gonna be able to show you this, but it's on the monorail. When the monorail opened in 1959, Walt Disney was given a plaque for the achievement in mechanical engineering for the feet of the monorail. It's at the boarding area of the monorail. Of course, the monorails are closed right now, so I can't show it to you. But when it opens up, go check out that plaque on the front of the monorail. The number one plaque in all of Disneyland, no surprise. You guys probably knew what it was. No big surprise. It's the dedication speech of Walt Disney. Looking right down Main Street, you got the flagpole right here in the center, and at the base of that flagpole, what do you have? The plaque here with a dedication speech. Let me zoom in so you can see a little better. Disneyland, to all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Here age relives fond memories of the past, and here youth may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals the dreams and the hard facts that have created America with the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration to all the world. July 17th, 1955. Here's something interesting about this dedication speech. Did you know there's three different versions of it? I, I know, three different versions. You'd think that that would be something very standardized by Disney, but Disney has printed three different versions. This is believed to be the most authentic version, of course. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been a lot of fun to make. This is, this is something that was, uh, kind of inspired from our Patreon community. So yeah, check that out too if you want to join the Patreon community. Put us down below, the comments down below. What do you want us to do? What kind of quirky videos do you like us to do? If I can research it and I can verify the information, I'll do the video for you guys. All right, talk to you later, bye-bye.